Morning. Hey everybody, today's video is sponsored by GSI. Today we'll be harvesting some corn, but first, we've got a fella coming to help us today that's never helped us. This is my wife's uncle, Jeff. Uh, Jeff is a retired Kenworth employee, so I figure maybe he knows how to drive a Kenworth truck. We're gonna find out. But anyways, he's coming. He's gonna ride with me to Bloomingburg, give him a little bit of on-the-job training. Yeah, then we'll get, uh, get moving rolling some corn out. But first, uh, Dad has someone coming from tire place down the road they brought a tire to replace that one that busted on the lexion don't know if you guys remember that but we did have a tire blow out on the lexion whenever we were running it so gotta get that fixed for now we're gonna eat a cookie and have some coffee bj people are gonna be worried about your health your mental health i'm great okay i can't wait to go back monday night and they have watch, a game, they have watch a game? chargers or the rams the rams yeah. Yeah, they play next Monday night. I guess we won't. Uh, Hopefully I'm we're done. definitely not going to L.A. to watch them play. And wrong side. Do our pre-trip here. Yeah. Jeff, you okay being on YouTube? Sure. The question is, is the world ready for Jeff to be on YouTube? Probably not. Get some fuel in this thing, check a couple things and start cutting for the day. We're gonna start picking, harvesting, combining, I call it combine. There, got a new fuel pump. So earlier this week, our fuel pump quit working one of the days. So just kind of topped off last week how good of a week it was and the combines are they're basically running on fumes right now hey dad hey. jeff was telling me them truck drivers that don't speak english yeah. they don't have to take a cdl test oh well, 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 we go get through that i'll be able to do that then bj just got back and dad's already taken off we're late Let's go, let's go. Dad's in a hurry. Okay, here we are Monday. It's uh, 18th May. Shell corn over to the farm. Uh, so we've got a few more loads to take up there that's not plant and we'll be done. That contract will probably go to beans. We got some beans ready. So this is I don't know, it looks like about the same moisture, 1920, 21. Depends on where it feels. Where you're at this down there in the low spot. Up on the bank, I know it'll be wetter. Got the uh, feelers, row feelers working, so we don't have to guide it. Makes it pretty nice. Well, it ain't bad corn, about like we've been doing. I'm surprised you can up on the hill, it'll probably be different. But I gotta find some place to put you guys, or even a place to hold it. Magnets. No place to stick the magnets, so I might work on that. Well, yeah, this course kind of surprised me. It's, uh, of course, this first round, usually the first round to be the best corn in the whole field. So far, it's uh, probably going to be that. Pretty good corn. But we're still been doing some of the lower ground. We'll get up on the bank here. We'll see. Best one is over there working on the other combine, put the tire on the back. So we'll switch it over to beans now. Had a little bit of rain there yesterday. That's a big surprise. Half inch. That's the most we've had for a month or more. One time. Settled dust anyway. Might help the double crop beans a little bit. I don't know. Uh, waiting on the green cart. BJ get here so uh, I can get out and look. See what kind of job we're doing. See some on the ground. I used to check out. There's some here. That stripper place off the wide. That's what was showing over the road there. That's what happened there. I never the stripper place up. That'll help. Look out here where it throws a chopper. There's a few kernels, but looks like less than a bushel overall. There's some there. 
Still got a little bit of loss. More than I'd like, but well, I've done about everything I can do, I think. Just the front of the machine, see what the head loss looks like. That's where we stopped right here. This is comes out of the machine, out of the, uh, yeah, we see some here on the ground. You scatter it out over 30 feet, that's not as bad. If you can see some uh, head loss, butt showing, we call it. So I close stripper plates up out of help. When I unfold the head, they're at the same switch, and it usually opens them up. Sometimes I forget it, but there's, see, there's a lot of head loss there. So. We're running a, uh, we put a, a different concave in last year, concaves. There's three of them, four of them, and uh, called, I think, Precision Farm or something like that. We got them put in it. Seemed to help a little bit. And we run wheat, and it did good wheat, beans, seemed to be okay. Biggest copper is that going corn. It just uh, throws a little bit more out. It looks like it's more than what it is, but uh, I'm not used to leaving corn like that. But uh, So it gets a little drier. We'll dial in some more. I think a couple changes I can make yet. See if we can't get a little better. It seems like you got to keep it pretty full. Well, if you run it empty, Oh, 22, 2500 RPM, or bushel an hour, it, it don't do as good a job, I don't think. You lose a little more out, there, out the rotors, I believe, rotor. But if you keep it around 32, 3500, above 3000, it seems to do a little better job, I think. So we'll keep adjusting on, see if we can get a little better. Every corn's different, it's a different variety, so every variety is different. So I don't know if you can see the beans up there in front of us. I think that field's ready, and there's a couple other fields. So I went and got us a couple sandwiches for lunch. Basically, if we don't uh, don't grab something now, well, we're gonna be stuck in trucks the rest of the day. So everybody's eating a cheeseburger. It's a good opportunity to see harvest loss because with a gleaner, your chopper is spitting everything out to one side more so than that side. So when you're opening up a field, you can quickly tell based on the driveway how much corn you're losing out of the uh, rotor. truck still from last week to pick up but Jeff has never really drove the Bloomberg load riding with me today so I'm going to go over and wait on him to get a load he should have a load here real soon and we're going to convoy up there and then we'll set him free on his own but you know the first load driving 50 miles from home to an elevator you've never been to uh, I'll just go with him and be in front Break him in easy. No, so while we're this close to the shop, though, we might as well get us a uh, bottle of water. Kind of surprised Dad didn't come up here and let the dogs out. BJ had to run home real fast, so while we're waiting on him, we'll hop in this cart and keep this combine rolling. Alrighty. Looks like the field's yielding pretty well. Bubby's windows are pretty dirty. Everybody give him some crap about that. He'll love it. Tell you one thing really nice about these Fent tractors or the Thousand Series Challenger pedal mode. Like right now we're in first or we're in forward gear. This is a CVT transmission, but we're in pedal mode, so we're not moving. Got a bump up, just eh, stop, and we stop. Now all that could be done right here, but it's just for this kind of work, loading trucks. I like the pedal. There you go. Come I only on. fired it twice. Enjoy your trip. So for the casual viewers here, each semi when we're running corn represents roughly five acres. So it's kind of a, I don't want them top miking. Kind of an easy way to tell, uh, you know, I guess how much we're getting done. Oh, they've done five semis. Well, that's 46 acres. I'm just kidding. I'm from Southern Ohio, but even I'm not that bad at math. Well, 
Well, we've got uh, one more round. We've got open up, up on the hill here. It's about 160, 170. Dryer, 16, 7. 17 is dryer, but not as good. But there's up to 170, so. Just too dry for this gravel. But where there's moisture or heavier ground over the hill, it's a uh, lot better. Well, we're sitting here waiting on the trucks to build up everything. Sitting there, they should be in probably a half hour or so, so maybe go do something else there. Cart's full, full enough for truck load, I'm almost full, so. I think we got uh, three loads to take up there yet. Uh, yeah, four loads to take up there yet, we'll be done with that contract. And that'll probably be all for the shelf. Looks like they got a little bit of a dent made in the field. So the cargo closes in an hour and a half, we should be able to finish this field. And that's probably gonna be it for today because we're still not storing yet. And uh, they, they close at four o'clock. Yeah, come back over here and load up. All right, last load of the day. I'm honestly surprised they're not busier. So a few people have asked in the previous videos, is there free drying or anything like that? There is not, so we're getting $1,600 premium, basically a truck like I've said before. That's because it's $1.60 over. But when you take drying out, that's coming out of that. We're still money ahead, but it's not $1,600 a truck when you figure drying. At $1,600 would be if this was 15% corn, it's not. Yeah, Brian got back and uh, Jeff got back, so uh, we've got two more loads, all we need to take up here. So we load the truck we got. One the drink cart, and it should do it, it'll be done. That's all we're going to shell for now. See, we've got to get dryer hooked up. Just about dry enough to put them in. I guess we could, but we got beans to do, so. I think tomorrow we're going to farm science for you. Then get back, Rizzy. The rest of the week we'll uh, work on these soybeans. Switch the combines over. See how they are. Well, folks, after today we will have harvested enough grain to meet our contract. So that $1.60 premium is no longer going on. So I don't know what we're going to do now. I don't know if we're going to switch to beans. That might be the plan. Uh, we'd like to dry the rest of the corn instead of paying the elevator to dry it but while we're waiting on electricians we might just switch to beans we have some beans that are ready well you survived your first day trucking yep made it come back here to the garage site this is the uh first time i've seen my front porch cousin ben poured and stamped this today i was hoping to be here for some of the stamping but just didn't just didn't work out didn't take them long for them guys to do that. Now, if you notice this concrete's brown, that's color they put in because, well, it's supposed to look like cedar wood, so that's why. Didn't even have to tear this one off, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, when they stamped the back porch, it didn't quite go right, and well, it had to come off of there. Now, right now, there's a lot of this powder that they put on the forms, so that when they stamp it, uh, I guess it keeps it from sticking, I think. But basically what I'm saying is this is not how it will look Ben will come in here in a day or two and pressure wash this and then it'll look uh, like it's finished product. So this is Monday, September 18th. We always go to Farm Science View on the first day, which is Tuesday, which would be tomorrow. So right now we are getting Dad's golf cart ready for Farm Science View. Yep, that's what we're done. Supposed to be meeting a guy over here from GSI on our dryer. We're installing a system on that dryer that I, I can't remember the name right offhand, but basically we'll be able to monitor everything from our phone, make adjustments from our phone without Wi-Fi. And it's gonna be pretty, pretty sporty because we don't have Wi-Fi over here. But to do all this shenanigans, we need my aluminum trailer that's in this hoop barn, which is currently holding a very large vault door. So we need to unload that. So Lexi got a new rear tire today, I believe. Oh yeah, looky there. Brand spanking new. Just the one side, still rocking the old one over there. So this is Greg Tramey yep. from uh, GSI. Greg is taking off our watchdog system and putting on What's it called? GSI Connect. GSI Connect. Yeah, okay. so they basically do the same thing. They allow you to remotely monitor the dryer from wherever you are. Um, this is the one that's been in production for probably 10 years. Um, 
basically they're going to do the same thing. The new one really has some updated connectivity. It's got built-in cellular communication, and then it goes to an app that has some new functionality. So, so the old system was basically just mirroring this screen, wasn't it? Yeah, the old system, uh, if you provided an internet connection to the dryer, it would let you on your phone or computer, you would see everything that you would see on the vision screen here. So it yeah, folks, pretend we got power and you can see the vision screen. We don't have power yet. That's right. Yeah, so you would basically mirror and see what is on this screen, and it would allow you to make changes, um, change your settings, make sure that the dryer is working correctly. Um, the new one, uh, or, but that one required you to get a dedicated internet connection to the dryer. Not just Wi-Fi, but an actual... Not Wi-Fi. It needed a wired internet connection to it, whereas the new one that we're going to put in actually has a cellular modem built into it. So all the cellular connectivity is right built onto that control. So once we get power to it, um, it'll uh, connect to a cellular network and then it'll take care of providing all that information to the app. That's so, handy. Yeah, and this one you'll actually go to the App Store or the Google Play Store, you'll download the app. Um, so it, has, it also has multi-dryer functionality. So if you have more than one dryer in your operation, you can actually monitor both of them in the app. And also now this is purely cloud-based. So we're sending the data up to the data cloud and then your app's gonna interact with that. So now you'll be able to get history on your GSI Connect app. So if you wake up in the morning, you wanna see how the dryer do overnight, you can hit a button and it can show you up to that last 12 hours of what it was doing. So how retrofitable is it? I mean, obviously we're putting it on this one that didn't yep. come with the factory, but do you have to have basically this or this yes. control board for it to work? So you have to have our vision controller that goes So like on. our old 12, 16 would not work because it has the older style. Correct. I believe that has a competitor control on it. So that's the version from before vision. Okay. So this one's been out since I believe around 2005. Okay. So if it's uh, any dryer that, that looks like this that says vision, um, the vision connect card will connect right up to it and allow you to, uh, to remotely monitor that dryer. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. There's that. So this is the watchdog? Yep, so that's the watchdog board that came out. So we will, uh, you won't need that anymore, but we'll, we'll put the new one here into place. place it. Yep. Is it too late to move it? There's not. <laughs> anything up there, right? No, that's just moving air. So that okay. that is a little bitty one of these. Okay. So what happens is you've got here is your moisture sampler. So this is our our static moisture sampler. So we um, we're trying to measure the moisture of the grain without it moving. So what happens is um, you notice this is toward the top of the tube. So on the auger in here, there's a spot with the flight missing and there's a flipper in there. Uh, okay. So we throw corn up out of the stream. That way we don't get all the cobs, chaff, and everything gotcha. else. We throw that up, it'll come through here. This just catches any big hunks. And then we let it come in and fill up around the sampler. So you can see you got a window here and here so you can see what's going on. So when the dryer wants to take a sample, it'll turn on that blower and it'll blow air through this pipe and it'll blow all the grain out that was in here into the discharge. Once we blow that out, then we let it fill back up and we actually let the grain pack in at the same rate every time then. So it'll, it'll blow the old grain out, it waits a certain amount of time, it fills up all the new grain, and then it waits and takes the moisture sample. Um, it really improved the accuracy of the moisture sampling because we're not taking a sample of grain while it's moving. Okay. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you would, do us a favor. Thumbs up the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and drop us a comment, and we'll see you in the next one.